You are listening to the Urban Sports Scene with Empire Media. That's at empiremedia.com. And it is now time for our HBCU Corner segment. And our guest today has a coaching resume at both the high school and the junior college level, in addition to serving as a basketball consultant for the Georgia Hoop Circle. Our guest has a reputation of being a strong recruiter as well as a developer of talent. He's coached the men as well as the ladies, and he's currently the interim coach at North Carolina a and State University for the men's basketball team. Welcome to the Urban Sports Scene, Coach Philip Shumpert. Welcome, Coach. Thank you, man. I'm glad y'all had, had me uh, come by and speak. Oh, it's an honor and a privilege. Oh, thank you for being on. It's an honor for us, to be honest with you. You're part mm-hmm. of the movement. You know what I mean? So it's an honor, it's an honor for us. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we, we're going to start off. We're going to have a little fun. And, okay. and actually, you know what? Before we do that, I just want to say this. Um, you're currently at North Carolina AT, and right now AT is experiencing record growth, record enrollment. Um, just talk about the, the culture at North Carolina AT. As a matter of fact, the chancellor. Harold Martin, he said, quote, truly, there has never been a more exciting time to be an Aggie. So what's your thoughts about that? And just give us, again, insight about the culture there at North Carolina a Well, this is going, going into my fourth year. Um, I spent, you know, the first three years as assistant. I'm the interim head coach now. And to watch the – when I first got here, I can't – I was at Jackson State originally, uh, another HBCU. I coached there. And I came here. and the Aggie pride is real, man. The students, the alumni, the support is is amazing, and and just to see the growth as we went, as we've been, as this is our third league in three years, um, just to see the you know overall ath- growth of the athletic department and the record enrollment each year, we're hitting record numbers, and it's just it's just been a been an amazing ride those last these last three or four years uh for the school you know um and it's going to continue to grow and 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 you know they they um you know got new projects building and and and, and um uh, it's just growing every day so i mean it's it's exciting times here and, and especially in athletics with us getting getting an opportunity if it was in the MEAC, being got a chance to go to the big south and now when what you know, ba- basketball wise, twelve best conference in the country. You know, what I'm saying as as the largest HBCU, it's a you know, it's, it's big time to get an opportunity to be in a conference at that high of a level. I love the swagger. I'm not. I, I'm not going to ask about Jiho right now. I hear enough about it. But you know what? That's ridiculous. I, I, was, <laughs> I was. I was. I was at the uh, Aggie Eagle Classic in Charlotte. And mm-hmm. uh, it looked like an ANC home game. I tell you, even though Central, same state, but ANC showed up and show out. So I can't hate. You all are definitely representing. I appreciate that. And I yeah. want to ask, like I said, we're going to have a little fun. So, of course, you know all too well about the buzz surrounding J.R. Smith being a student athlete right there on campus, part mm-hmm. of the golf team. Have you ever thought about asking him about his eligibility for basketball? <laughs> <laughs> I wish he did have some eligibility. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he he he's he, he's came he, he's came to the school and just really locked in and focused on uh you know his academics and golf and you know he was had the highest grade point average any student athlete last year. Man, he's done a tremendous job of of um you know coming back to school and um you know uh, blending in, working hard, and just. You know, trying to trying to be a student athlete now instead of you know as because he went 15 years as a, as an NBA star. So uh, mm-hmm. I wish he did have some else, they'll be tremendously. <laughs> no, it never crossed your mind, huh? <laughs> has he, Not really. Has he ever tried to drop his two cents in in terms in terms of the, of the basketball program? Has no, he, no, hmm. no. Um, he's um he's been focused on the task at hand. He's trying. Uh-huh. I think he's you know getting better and better with, you know, golf and um, concentrating on, um, you know, getting a, getting a degree from a and I know that's right. Sweet, sweet. All right, so let, let's get a little more serious now. As I mentioned in your introduction, you have a reputation of being a, a great recruiter. Yeah. How has the recruitment process been considering what we just what we just talked about pertaining to the university's growth as well as having a former NBA player on campus? Well, I mean, our, our recruitment – as we transitioned to the Big South last year, our recruitment um, was able to be taken to another level. We ended up getting Duncan Powell, 
who was an ESPN top 100, uh-huh. you know, a uh, high school kid. And then we end up uh, getting a um, um, few transfers that were really, really good for our program last year. And then this year we end up signing another kid who was a three-star kid. So our recruitment has elevated as, as, as the school and as we had moved conferences and, you know, just that, just that reputation of the school, you know, being the largest HBCU, having some of the best um, business and engineering programs in the country and things of that nature. And, and, and the thing is, you know, how, as we, as you move up, so I can play at this level and I can get the best of both worlds, a great college experience that I can always come back home to versus just, you know, playing, playing, playing basketball. And, you know, you know, how it, it's a difference. It's, it's yeah. a big difference. The culture of it is a big difference. And I think, um, I think uh, we've been able to be successfully, successfully recruit guys because of that. So coach, what are some of your big recruiting bases? Like what areas do you kind of focus on? Um, of course, North Carolina, mm-hmm. you know, it's the main base because the bat, you know, it's basketball state, of course. great new tradition. Uh, Georgia, um, um, Alabama, Tennessee, um, pinch out in Florida, Texas, and uh, Illinois. That's mm-hmm. been my uh, that's been my main recruiting basis. Right. So, coach, you're I mean, you're part of I mean, you're a part of the Boost Mobile HBCU Challenge in Vegas this this uh, this December alongside Norfolk State and Texas. Southern. Uh, talk about how that came about and how that ex- exposure will benefit your program as well as HBCUs in general. Well, I think it's a, it'd be a great benefit to HBCUs. This, this tournament with uh, us in Hampton, uh, Texas Southern and Norfolk. Um, um, two challenging games. Um, it's it's kind of like the CA right now versus the Swag and the MEAC. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, that, that, that that's a uh, um that's big i think that's gonna be big time but uh you know like texas southern is um the defending swag champions and um mm-hmm. Buffalo state is defending meag champion you know rob jones does a heck of a job each and every year up there and um man i think i think it's i think it's gonna be big for us we travel well so a lot of people are excited and talking about coming out to vegas and uh supporting <laughs> us and things of that nature so uh it's it's been it's really exciting for us uh, to get an opportunity to go out there and play against two big time HBCU programs. They want to party in Vegas. That's why they they want to party. Yeah, in Vegas. yeah. That's yeah. why you know what they're trying to. <laughs> yeah. I get the best of both worlds. Got the support and party a little bit. That's, right? that's true. That's true. That's best of both worlds. You're not lying about that. <laughs> don't, don't have too much fun out there. So so, coach, you just mentioned the CAA. That was the second conference shift. Um, how has that impacted the program for better or worse with just the changing of conferences and in ways, of course, elevating your, your, your program and just the university? Well, anytime you can continue to elevate as a, as, as a university and a, and a program, I mean, you, you can't complain about that. I mean, we, we, we was, like I said, was in the MEAC, we went to the Big South, you know, we, which we thought was we were going to be there for a while, but Ultimately, you know, with all this conference realignment around the country, Everybody. we got a chance to get to the conference that, you know, we ultimately wanted to be in, mm-hmm. um, you know, the CAA, a great, a great league in, in all of sports. I mean, especially basketball and football, it's a big time league. So, uh, you know, big time league for us, exposure for the uh, university. So we're excited about it. We're excited about it. Uh, we were able to capitalize on um, recruiting and by getting some high caliber guys, uh, that uh, could play it, you know, definitely could play at that level. So uh, it's helped us tremendously on the recruiting front. Coach, you talked about some, you know, some 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 great recruiting. Uh, so obviously, and it being in this tough conference, being in a conference that kind of raises the level, raises the bar um, mm-hmm. in terms of your own your your team skill or whatnot. So what's the mm-hmm. outlook of this um, going into the season, and um, what are some of the challenges going into the season as well? Um, I think going into the season. Our biggest, the biggest shift is going to be we're, when we're in the Big South. Uh-huh. The travel was local. Now you go, you start. We start conference off in Boston and then uh-huh. New York. You know, so, <laughs> so the um, the distance of travel we play really every Thursday and Saturday. So it's got to it's, it's play a game. Boom, go fly out. Boom, you know, say so it just it's just a quick quick turnarounds, quick turnarounds, but it's a long distance of travel. I think that that's going to be a you know, a challenge, you know, that we're going to have to get used to because we didn't have to do that in either one of the uh, conferences. Um, the outlook of the team has been great. I mean, these guys have been together all summer. 
uh, built a great chemistry. Uh-huh. Um, you know, they, they've been through some adversity, of course, you know, uh, and through that adversity, they became a really, really tight unit and family. So, uh, you know, they're holding each other accountable and, and, and um, out, they working hard, they working hard. You know, it was, it was, it was an easy transition because I built a relationship with most of those, uh, I recruited majority of those guys. So that, that uh, made the process uh, a little bit easier to get them to, you know, to buy in quickly to what, um, you know, we were, we were trying to do for this upcoming year. So in terms of like some, in terms of trying to get the program and get and having a fantastic season, what, who are some of the players you're going to be leaning on uh, for this season? Well, we got uh, two leading scorers back, Marcus mm-hmm. Watson, Demetri Horton. Um, Marcus Watson um, is a kid, um, was at Oklahoma State and New Mexico State, four-star kid uh, from Georgia, uh-huh. um, averaged like 12, four, six, five or six rebounds, um, plays uh, the wing for six, six, two, thirty-five. And he's really athletic, really good at getting to the basket. Can really knock down a, uh, you know, open shot. And then we got Demetri Horton, who, who we got from um, um, the Horizon League. He's our second leading scorer and second leading rebounder. So we got two guys coming back that, um, you know, build a nucleus for these young guys that we brought in. We brought in two guards that both of them won back-to-back national championships. In junior college, uh, Love Bettis at Coffee won a national championship as a freshman. And Cam Woods won a national championship last year at uh, Northwest Florida. So they know what it, they, they know what it, they know what it uh, takes to win. Uh-huh. They, they know what it's like. They know what they, they know what you got to do in order to uh, be successful, uh, at, you know, at, at a high level. So um, we're excited about those guys. Brought in a couple of big guys. Uh, Will Felder from Arizona State, six uh-huh. nine um, by two fifty. Um, this is really from North Carolina. Um, he's been really really good for us. Um, and we got uh, Austin Johnson, who was uh, from UC Irvine, 6'9", 245, uh, top 10 in the country in block shots last year, UC Irvine. Um, so, we, you know, that gives us a rim protector that we didn't have last year. Um, so we have a uh, – and then we got a, some returners like Jeremy Robinson, um, you know, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we got we – got, What'd you say? He's a DMV. I DMV. That's what Jeremy. DMV. Yeah, yeah, Jeremy. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Around here. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy. Jeremy's been tremendous for us. He's been a leader. He's been a leader. Um, he's um he's got his body right. He's playing his best basketball right now. And um, at, at toward the end of the season, he was a key guy, man. Uh, on that run that when we almost beat Longwood, man, uh, hitting shots, rebounding, playing hard. So he's gonna be he's gonna be tremendous for us. And and of course, you know, we got Duncan Powell. You know the guy. You know that was real really herald, heralded last year, but he did. You know he registered last year, so he's he's back uh, healthy and uh, he's uh, he's uh, looking really good out there. Inside outside guy, six eight, can really really get a lot of stuff done. High basketball IQ, really works hard. So we got a core of guys that um, that are high level guys that uh, can come right in if they stick together and play together. We could be really really good. So, Coach, can I, can, I, can I just guarantee a tournament in the NCAA tournament? tournament? Can I guarantee that? Am I allowed to do that? Or, or am I jinxing it? Or am I jinxing it? Because, you know, I know. I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to say nothing. One game at a time. I want to take right. one game at a time. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Approach it like that, man. And, and then at the end, we'll celebrate. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm with you then. One one game at a time. We'll go, we'll go with that motto. One game at a time. <laughs> Look, you, got a, you got a big season coming up. You got some high-level games. Houston. Yeah. Iowa, Iowa State. So that it's gonna be fun to watch. Jeremy Robinson, like I said, DMV is good to see you recruiting out of this area. That's where we we're from, DC, Maryland, Virginia. This this rich basketball culture that we have here, you should you should definitely look into it as well. I don't know if Carolina's a basketball state, but yeah. hey, well, we check got us out. Guy. You know, I got, a, I got another guy that, that that gets in that area, Washington D.C., Philly. Uh, okay, my basis, but we we got, we got someone in that um, D.C. area that's. I think gonna be there next week. Uh, in the area trying to trying to find some guys uh from the DMV and Philly area. So Definitely. yeah, that's what the basketball good basketball being played up there. So you know we got to get up there. Hey, got to be more too. Don't 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 forget about be more. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, thanks, coach, for joining us. I love the energy. You got me thinking. Now December, I was supposed to be in Charlotte for a tournament, but I might I might just show up in Vegas. <laughs> be there, man. Need to be there, man. <laughs> it's be a place there. to be. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, you know, support we can get. Oh, no doubt.
Love it. Mm -hmm. Well, Coach, thanks for being on. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thanks for being on HBCU Corner. Hey, thanks for having me.